Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to talk about the skill levels in the game that you can choose before you get into a battle. These are sort of like increasing levels of difficulty, but it's probably more accurate to say that they are increasing levels of realism. The lower levels are arguably easier, but that's because of changes to some of the core cool gameplay mechanics like spotting and information sharing, not because the weapon damage, AI or anything like that is changing. These are all the same, no matter what's going on. There are five skill levels in all. Basic Training, Veteran, Warrior, Elite and Iron. There's also a Scenario Author Test, but that's more for mission designers to check their AI plans than it is for actually playing the game. To show the differences between these levels, we've got the Rahadnak Valley map in Shock Force 2, some Panzer Grenadiers and some Syrians who were going to be eyeballing. On basic training, if we spot an enemy unit we get the maximum amount of information possible, pretty much the same amount of information we get about our own units. If we select this tank, spotted by our observer team for example, we can see everything, the exact vehicle type, details about the crew, including their morale and suppression states, we can go through the data tabs to see how much ammunition it has, what damage it sustained to all its subsystems, and get an impression of the effectiveness of its armour against different weapons. We can even see what the individual crew members are doing, just as if it was one of our own vehicles. This also applies to the infantry and we can get information about whole squads and teams, even if we've only spotted a single individual. We also have no indeterminate contact icons. Our observer team doesn't sort of spot things without being able to tell what they are. If they see something, they identify it immediately. At basic training level, this information is also instantly shared across all of our units. There is perfect and instantaneous communication, also known as Borg spotting. If one of your Pixel Trapper knows something, all the others in the Pixel Trapper Collective know it as well. In addition to much simplified spotting and information sharing mechanics, Pixel Trippen also take slightly fewer casualties and are less prone to panic when it's all going wrong, though this is really difficult to test. They also conduct buddy aid much faster and, probably the biggest minor difference, calling for artillery or air support is extremely fast. It only takes a minute for our FO here to call in artillery and air support, and only two for everyone else. Moving up to the veteran skill level, the spotting system starts to get a lot less simplistic. Enemy units are not always immediately identified and will appear as contact icons before the spotter works out what they are. And selecting an enemy unit will not tell you absolutely everything about it anymore. For vehicles we just get the silhouette and basic information, while for infantry we can only see the weapons and unit card information. The information sharing mechanics are also now in effect, so spots need to travel up and down the C2 links instead of just being instantly broadcast across the collective. The speed of other actions is also decreased a bit, so buddy aid and calling for fire take longer. Next we have Warrior, which I personally would consider the bare minimum level to play the game if you want the combat mission experience. All enemy units now have to be properly identified before they change from contact icons to 3D models, and selecting enemy infantry now no longer shows their weapons. Also important at this level is the fact that buddy aid and calling for support now take realistic amounts of time. In comparison to the two minutes it took an infantry squad to call for artillery and air support back at basic training, it now takes them six or ten minutes respectively. The elite skill level is the same as Warrior, except that enemy infantry units now all have generic infantry icons. You can still work out what they are by selecting them or looking at the 3D models, but the user interface doesn't tell you. This is the skill level that I almost always play at, and what you see in almost all of my videos. Mostly because the next and final skill level, Iron, goes a step further. It is exactly the same as Elite, except the spotting system now also applies to friendly units. So if we select our observers again, we can see that they have to spot the Panzer Grenadiers in the valley behind them, with in contact but out of sight units around the corner being represented by contact icons. 
This is actually very good for visualizing your C2 links, seeing which of your units are in contact with one another, but as a mechanic I personally think that it's just extra work. The player is simultaneously every friendly leader on the map, so they know where everything is anyway, and you can still control units that are out of contact, so restricting what friendly units you can see when one is selected is somewhat redundant in my opinion. Ultimately, however, play the game however you like. I'd say the big takeaway if you're new to combat mission is that the skill levels basically only alter two things, how much information you get and how long it takes to do certain things. These can certainly have an impact, but they don't fundamentally alter the difficulty of the game in any way. That's it for this video, nice quick one while we're still hanging on on the edge of our seats for Fire and Rebel and Cold War. I'll see you in the next one.